It turns out that pop-up tents are really clever and there's some lovely mathematics involved too. I've always found it difficult to put a pop-up tent away. Like they definitely save time at the beginning of a camping trip, but at the end of a camping trip, for me at least, they seem to add a lot of time. Here's the thing though, I always find that I'm better at something if I can figure out how it works and why it was made to work that way. So I pulled one apart. My first thought was that looking at the base of it, it's like one of those pop-up car window shades. And I have absolutely no problem putting one of those away. When you strip the fabric away, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. It does relax into a circle when you do that, but that's not really a problem for our purposes. Look, a 2D bouncy ball. Anyway, the trick is that you're not just putting a twist in it like this. Instead, you're creating that half twist with your hands, but then bringing your hands together. And that creates this extra loop in the middle that you sandwich between the two loops that you're holding in your hands. And what you end up with is a circle made of three layers of interwoven metal band. It's interesting that if you try to do a two layered circle, it doesn't work very well. You see, it's hard to lay this thing flat. There's a bit that always wants to jump up. That's because a two layered circle always puts a twist in the band. You can see that more clearly with this rubber band. See, I painted the outside black and you can see that some of the inside is now on the outside. If I bunch that part up, you can see this half twist puts the inside on the outside and this half twist puts it back on the inside. Those two half twists together make a full twist. Whereas it's possible to triple up the rubber band in other words, to create a three-layered circle in such a way that there are no twists. And because this is a metal strip, not a wire, we really need to worry about that. But it's interesting that as a general rule, it's impossible to fold a loop into an even number of layers and have no twists in it. But anyway, is this what you have to do to put away a pop-up tent? Well, one of these is just two of these where one of them is held up at the two ends by tension in this piece of fabric here. So the first step to putting it away has to be to gather the ends of the bottom one so they're in line with the top one. It's this shape that needs to be twisted away into a flat profile. For simplicity, let's try that with just one band instead of two, but with the restriction that the folding needs to start happening from this kind of U-shaped configuration. And actually, that just doesn't work with the metal band that I extracted from the pop-up window shade. Because it's a a band and not a rod, it does weird things when I try to force it into that configuration. It's impossible to do that thing that I did earlier and twist it into a three layered circle. And it seems like that's an important difference between the pop-up shade and the pop-up tent. The pop-up tent is made of rods, not bands. So instead of using a metal band for my model, I'm going to use nitinol wire. You may know nitinol wire as that stuff that pops back into its original shape when you get it above a certain temperature. But it's possible to tune that critical temperature. And for this type of nitinol, it's below room temperature. So it's always behaving in this really elastic way. Quick tangent here, but nitinol is a really strange material to handle. It's incredibly elastic. Nitinol can deform 10 to 30 times as much as ordinary metal and return to its original shape. And it's really hard to push beyond the elastic deformation limit. It's really hard to deform it plastically. And that's different to pretty much any wire you come across in everyday life. That's because nitinol is elastic in a completely different way. When you stretch or squish a regular metal, you're stretching and squishing the distance between metal ions. But with nitinol, you're actually switching between two different crystal arrangements. It means you can do all sorts of interesting things with it, like finding various vibrational modes. Okay, so this wasn't a quick tangent in the end, but it's fun though, isn't it? When it's just a straight piece of wire, it's fun to try and pick out this mode where you've got a node near the bottom there. The second harmonic of that is really tricky, but not impossible. But when you put it in a loop, there's this vibrational mode, but there's also this twisting vibrational mode. I wanted to see if I could find the high harmonics of those. With my vibration generator, I can find all sorts of different modes of this type. The twisting mode is harder to find the high harmonics of, but using this oscillating tool, I was able to get a few different modes by playing with the speed control. It's so springy that it's even hard to tie a knot in. Of course, I can ensure that the knot can't come undone by joining these two ends together. 
This is now a mathematical knot in the sense of a closed loop that can't be unbraided from itself. And that's got all sorts of interesting properties. In fact, the subject of elastic knots is really interesting. There's a lot to say about it. So that's going to be in a separate video. If you want to make sure that you don't miss that video, please consider subscribing and using the notification bell. It should be a really fun video. But anyway, when setting it up like a pop-up tent in this way, it becomes quite obvious how you're supposed to do it. Once you gather up the lower band into that U shape, you twist one side and tuck it into the other. It's actually the equivalent of doing this. We know from the rubber band that there now must be a full twist in the rods of the tent. That's interesting. So let's try that with the real thing. By the way, tent poles aren't made of nitinol. They're typically made of either carbon fiber or aluminium. That's fine, but it's still too big for the bag. And in fact, there's a second step, which I'll demonstrate on the model. You push down and twist like this and then you fold over. Here it is on the full sized one. And again, you're introducing another full twist. To my mind, all those twists are a bad idea, but actually I suppose it makes the packed down state a lot less stable. It's going to pop up a lot more quickly, which perhaps is desirable as compared to the metal band, which is incredibly stable in the triple fold. Interestingly, when you do that second fold, you're adding another full twist twice because the thing you're folding is doubled up. And depending on which way you go, they will either add to the twist that's already in it, so you end up with three twists in total, or they'll subtract from it. Subtracting two twists from one leaves you with minus one twist. Here's a clearer picture of what it means to subtract two twists from one. You can see that minus one twist is just a twist with opposite handedness. In other words, the mirror image of the first twist. I told you there was a lot of maths in it. It's a little bit like tying a shoelace. If you pair up the handednesses of the first knot and the second knot incorrectly, you end up with a knot that keeps coming undone. If that's you, try switching the handedness of the first knot. Anyway, I digress. It's interesting that the instructions make no mention of the handedness of the second fold. Actually, do you know what? Maybe they do. Like if you do exactly what the person in the picture is doing and avoid the mistake of mirroring what he's doing. And then if you make sure in the second step that the bar that's on top is like a forward slash instead of a backslash, you would actually end up with just one twist in the bars. Perhaps that is a deliberate attempt to get people to put the tent away with fewer twists in the poles. But I can't imagine people following the instructions that closely. I'm making out like it's really easy now you know how to do it. But of course, it is a lot easier when there isn't loads of fabric in the way. You have to do this jiggling thing after the first tuck, otherwise it all goes wrong. Actually, all this faffing about has revealed what I believe is a better way to do it that avoids that problem altogether. I noticed it with the Nitinol model. If you tip it on its side and then kind of collapse it in a shearing motion, you end up with this figure of eight that you can then fold over. You don't have to faff about with tucking fabric in. Wait, does that mean this video was useful in some way? God, yeah, I mean, this is going to change the world, isn't it? I'm kind of a hero, really. I always show these cool things from my videos to my kids and they always say, oh, wow. And then they just kind of walk away. I don't know what it is, but I struggle to turn these sorts of things into like structured learning opportunities for my kids. But it's OK because we subscribe to KiwiCo. We've been getting KiwiCo for years, in fact. It has the same effect of the kids going, oh, wow, but it's a project. So they're super engaged with it. KiwiCo provides a monthly crate delivered to your door with fun, hands-on projects from science and engineering to art and design. Every crate is designed to inspire excitement, curiosity, and moments of discovery. With nine different lines, there's something for every interest and age, even newborn babies. Everything you need comes in the crate, so you don't have to think about ordering anything else in or running to the shops at the last minute. Because it's something that they're doing for themselves, they're really invested in it. They're invested in understanding how it works. In this case, they're super interested in understanding hydraulics. And unlike the random stuff that I show them, these have been designed by experts and tested by kids. So you can be sure that they're pitched 
at the right level and you can be sure that it has replay value. And for me, it's just amazing to see how my kids have turned into little makers over the years. If it's something you're interested in trying, go to kiwico.com forward slash Steve Mould and use promo code Steve Mould at checkout to get 50% off your first month. The link is also in the description, so check out KiwiCo today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next.